Yeah, it's really fantastic that everybody came. So we really took this idea of this GraphQL conference like half a year ago and just got this idea into something actual that everybody's here. So that's really amazing. Um, so th today I want to really quickly talk about a concept which I'm really excited about, which is called schema-first development. So um, yeah, I'm Johannes Schickling. I'm one of the organizers of the conference. And I work at a company called GraphCool, which is a developer platform for building serverless GraphQL backends. So let's take a look at how software products are usually being developed. So in the best case scenario, the front-end team and the back-end team are exactly on the same page and can build a perfect product based on just an idea or a mock-up without any further communication. But usually, that's not just how it works. So in reality, things are not communicated clearly enough, requirements change, one team has to wait for another until new changes have been implemented. And this really slows down development and can be quite frustrating. In some cases, miscommunication between teams can even kill projects. So obviously, this is far from optimal. And the biggest problem here is partly a communication problem. Um, and what's really missing is that all teams need a medium to talk about the same thing. And the perfect medium for this is called GraphQL IDL. So before actually starting to implement the product, all teams can sit down together, analyze all of the requirements, and design the schema for the application using the IDL notation. So this will be the contract for all teams going forward. And that's exactly the idea of schema-first development. So for those of you who are not yet familiar with GraphQL IDL, here's a quick introduction. GraphQL IDL is a very concise syntax to specify a GraphQL schema. You're basically writing small type definitions which represent the data model of your application. Even though the GraphQL IDL syntax is not officially yet part of the GraphQL spec, um, a lot of tools are already adopting it. So this is how it looks like when you're defining the type definition, for example, for a, call, for a type called item. You can specify the fields of it and also their corresponding types. The syntax also supports enums and even interfaces, as you can see here. Um, you can even add directives to types and fields based on the own, uh, own DSL you can, you can implement. And this is a really powerful tool. So to give you a, a bit of an uh, example how this could, could look like, uh, let's put ourselves into the, the shoes of the software development teams and analyze this re the requirements of this rough mock-up. Um, so here we have a list of items. Each item has a name, it has a description, it has a price, and every item has also, is also related to a vendor and a rating information. On the left, we have a hierarchical list of categories, each of which has a list of items. And finally, we also have the concept of a card where users can put in items. So this was just a quick example that you have already seen how a GraphQL IDL schema can look like. Um, and the fact that we're using the IDL notation is the, the foundation for that. That enables a completely new workflow. So today, I want to quickly take a look at three ways how we can leverage the GraphQL IDL schema. So um, who of you has already seen or used uh, GraphQL Voyager? Perfect. And that's a fantastic tool um, and that can give non-technical people a visual representation of your data model. And the foundation for that is really just your schema. You don't need to write any, any code for that. Another way to leverage your IDL schema is as a foundation to implement your own GraphQL server. So in this example, um, when you're, for example, looking at the, the GraphQL server implementation, uh, which is maintained by Apollo, um, you can use the GraphQL schema as a template for your Express app. However, you still need to implement all the database bindings on your own and also features like pagination. So 
taking this a step further, you can also uh, use the GraphQL IDL to set up a serverless GraphQL backend. So based on our Amazon example, here we use a GraphQL schema to set up a production-ready GraphQL API. We can simply edit our local schema and push the changes to update our API. We can already instantly use the GraphQL API to queries, do mutations, and so on, and directly use it in our front-end app. To give it a try, um, you can simply install it on via npm, via npm install GraphQL, and run GraphQL in it to get started. And one last thing, uh, in case you're liking to work with GraphQL and you're looking for a new job, uh, please get in touch. Thank you.